This is Rogers TV. Welcome to Daytime Ottawa here on Rogers TV. Another fabulous show ahead, and we are going to start with a Billboard Top 10 artist. He's also a Juno nominee, and that's just two of the many accolades he's had over his career. I'm joined by J.W. Jones. J.W., how you doing, buddy? It's great to see you. Um, you must be so excited to be back doing in-person performances. Uh, tell me how that feels first off. Oh, man, it's incredible. Uh, just did a five-week tour across North America, and, um, you know, all the way through uh, a bunch of the Midwest and then BC down through California and Arizona and played in Vegas and then a bunch of Texas dates. And uh, it's just incredible to be back on the road and, and playing and, you know, doing what I do. Well, and I mean, you, you, you do a lot of different things because you have a solo career and you're, you're with a couple of different bands. So that touring, was that with Hirojo? No, that was with my band. My okay, band. okay. Well, let, yeah, let's talk about, first of all, let's talk about your band and, and what this has been like, because during the pandemic, I, I love the quote you made, I believe it was, you're turning isolation into inspiration, and you decided that you would you would record an album, and this is probably your, your biggest album yet. Uh, tell me about your 10th album. Well, we had some tracks recorded with a big band, um, and, uh, you know, we opened the files, Eric Eggleston and myself, you know, he was across town, and uh, we started looking at the tracks just to just to do something, just to have some project to work on. And uh, initially, it was the idea was to have an EP, you know, maybe four songs, five songs. And as we started digging into it, it was just like, wow, this stuff sounds amazing. We could make a whole record out of this. And uh, you know, we had the time, so uh, we we took some liberties with that and and really uh, made something unique and special with it, and and added some weird effects and things that we've never done before and uh, it was you know turned out really well yeah tell me about sonic departure so what what what, what sort of themes do you d are on the album uh, do you do any covers I know I mentioned it's probably the biggest album you did yet because what was it a 17 piece band you worked with that's right it's a 17 piece band with a 13 piece horn section so it's oh, a, a true geez. old school big band yeah yeah it's incredible I mean just just having the charts written was you know, a project uh, of its own and then seeing it all through and, and actually performing with the guys. And um, yeah, man, it's just, it's incredible. Uh, there are a couple original tunes on it, three originals and uh, the rest are covers. And uh, you know, there are tunes on there that I've always wanted to do, you know, uh, things that I used to do a song by guitar slim, for example, I've always loved that tune. And, you know, you can't really justify recording certain songs unless you have the right instrumentation. And, right. Uh, you know, the upright bass was a big part of that and the horn section. And, uh, you know, and then we also did some original songs and kind of reinvented them with the uh, with the horns as well. I mentioned Hirojo. Uh, you guys went to the International Blues Challenge. You, you won it all. Um, you had dates set up. You had all of this momentum and then a pandemic hit. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about that and, and the effect the pandemic has had on Hirojo. Yeah, well, I mean, Hirojo Trio was only together for just over a year, and we decided to go down to Memphis and, and compete after winning here in Ottawa. And, um, you know, I mean, the stakes are pretty high. There are literally over 200 bands. I think it was like 230 bands. And uh, we just went in there and, and did our best. You know, we played uh, our style of, of roots and blues and, uh, you know, Jeff Rogers singing. I mean, this guy could sing the phone book and it's <laughs> yeah. incredible. Um, you know, so we went down there and, and just did our thing. And yeah, we won the whole the whole deal and I won guitar player as well. And then uh, within weeks, yeah, the world totally shut down and you know, here we are. So we actually did win a bunch of festivals that we were able to play as well as a couple that unfortunately were canceled due to travel regulations and things like that. Um, and then we have uh, the, the legendary blues cruise is coming up that we're playing at the end of January. So still lots to look forward to there. Well, and lots to look forward to here in Ottawa because you've got your J.W. Jones and Friends concert coming up. Let's talk a little bit about that, what, be what people can expect at this year's concert. Yeah, so this is the third annual, if you don't count missing last year. And um, it's just a, a really cool show that I've been very fortunate to work with these guys on. And um, uh, Centerpoint's been great, Meridian Theatres, you know, I mean, 
the main thing is that when we started this, it was like, how do we create something special at center point that can't be seen, you know, at, at one of the local clubs like the rainbow bistro or something like that. So it became uh, JW Jones and friends. And I picked four guests and uh, this year we have Tony D who I've, you know, looked up to and admired for my, my whole career. And since even before I played guitar, I was playing drums sitting in with him and his band, you know, when I was 15 years old at Tucson's. Um, so Tony D, uh, we've got Angelique Francis, who's an incredible bass player and vocalist. Uh, she'll be playing upright bass and singing. Uh, we've got uh, Michael Hanna singing, who is just an incredible singer. I can't wait for people to see him. And, uh, and then Brie Lawrenson, who is a country artist. And, uh, you know, my, my guilty pleasure is new country music. So nice. I'm really happy to be able to back her on this. <laughs> I love it. And, you know, I think what's really unique here is, is uh, some of these people, as you mentioned, you and Tony D have a, a longstanding relationship. You've known each other for years. And then there are some people that you, you invite that, you know, you've, you've perhaps never even met in person before. H how do you go about choosing who joins you on stage? You know, it's always tough because we want to have a diverse lineup uh, with instrumentation and male, female and, you know, cultural, everything. So it is difficult to find the right people. Um, but, you know, I, I just follow my ears mainly and, and follow my heart in terms of the music and what moves me, because I know that if I'm excited about it, that's going to translate to the audience. And, and this uh, this lineup is really, really incredible. We had a rehearsal already and nice. everyone sounds amazing. So uh, I, I honestly think this crowd is being totally spoiled. Oil, if I can be honest, it's like <laughs> it's it's incredible. They're going to see some some of the best talent in the city. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. So um, it is happening. You mentioned Meridian Theaters at Center Point. When and how do people get tickets? Thursday night, and uh, you can get tickets. I mean, you can go to my website jw-jones.com, click on tour, and then you'll see a ticket button on there, or go straight to the venue website, Meridian Theaters at Center Point. And uh, Thursday night, I, th I think we start at uh, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. Yeah, I think it's se yeah 7, 7.30, somewhere around there. JW, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. All right, take care. Again, that is Thursday, December the 16th. You can visit JW Jones's website for ticket information. Of course, to get his brand new album, we'll be back with more after this.